Hi everyone, John here from Alma Nature's Great and Small, and today we have an unboxing and first look at the Soviet Starter Force. This is in conjunction with the release of the intelligence briefing for um, Bagration. That's uh, Soviet Late War 1944, and we see that here on the box. So I love these Battlefront uh, starter boxes. They usually run about $100, this one does. But in full disclosure, Battlefront did send me this as a review copy and I did not um, purchase it. So keep that in mind and just so that you know that as we're talking through this review. That doesn't change my opinion or what I'm gonna say because I don't know what I'm gonna say yet. I haven't cracked open the box, but um, just know that up front. All right, what do we have in this box? Well. Um, flip it over obviously it's everything in the picture uh, but we get more than that we get four IS-2 tanks they list them as two IS-120 ISU-122s and two ISU-152s but you can build them they're interchangeable you can build four of these or four of those or however you want to break them up you have four SU-76 assault guns three BA-64 armored cars four uh, uh, 57 or 76 millimeter guns, so you could build these either way. Um, then you have a bunch of infantry teams, nine DPMG and M1891 rifle teams, a commissar, two heavy machine gun teams. We get a complete rule book, a Soviet start here booklet, two decal sheets, and 12 unit cards. So this is pretty much kind of almost everything you need to start playing. I do know that in the back of the Bagration book, it does um, talk about this particular starter force and how you might field it and what you might purchase to add. And we'll talk about that, uh, you know, my thoughts on that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and open this up and see what we get. I do want to compliment the uh, Battlefront packers because whenever I open up a box like this, I can never get the stuff back in um, the way that they packed it. So there you have the person who packed it. Um, so you've got some bubble wrap from past experience that's just filler to keep things from clattering around and then let's just slide everything out here and take a look at everything. Maybe this is why I just make a big pile of, of everything. Alright so this looks pretty cool already. It's a lot of plastic uh, for your money. Um, let's look at the start here booklet first. These are always pretty handy because they have assembly instructions. A snapshot of the cards. So as you're building them, you can kind of decide which one you want. It has a start here for your army. So it looks like out of the box you can get an army uh, worth 89 points and I'm sure if you build it differently you might be able to get more or less depending on how you, you build these but um, that's, that's pretty cool. And then unit cards and then some recommendations for how to paint your models, quick start, that kind of stuff. And what's next? Okay, so there's our rule book. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, organize this a little bit more. Here you have the entire contents as far as models laid out in front of you. So you get quite a bit. Uh, the reason why I show this is one, I make sure everything is in the box that, um, that they're supposed to be. And we can go through and I make sure I don't miss anything. So um, it's very cool. You get a lot, of, a lot of good stuff like I said in here. So let's start with um, what we've got. You've got the IS-2s, which can be built, uh, built as IS-85s. And we'll probably look at those cards in a little bit. And you've got the uh, sprue for the, um, this is going to be either the ISU-122 or 152. Now they, they're both built on the same chassis. So you've got eight of um, the, the bottom of the tank, basically. Then you have your four SU-76s, your four, or sorry, your three BA-64s, and uh, your infantry your anti-tank guns. I think these resin crew are for the uh, SU-76s because it's open in the back. And then here you've got um, crew for the artillery guns and tank commanders. 
And then you have the obligatory stands for the artillery or the anti tank guns and the infantry. So, all right, uh, let's start by looking at uh, let's go smallest first, shall we? Let's take a look at the infantry. Now, I did recently pick up um, an SMG company, which was the Battlefront uh, Flexible Plastic. Um, uh, these are not flexible plastic, these are hard plastic on a sprue. Um, so they're a little bit different, but uh, they look good. So let's uh, zoom in and take a closer look. All right, you get two uh, sprues of these. They are identical sprues. The detail on these guys is pretty nice. Like the heavy machine gun there is a two-piece model. Oh, maybe a three-piece model. Looks like the loader is uh, attaches as well. Pretty cool. Go in and get the detail. You and I are finding out together if any of the pieces are broken, but no. And these these barrels have a little flex to them, so they're they're. Not going to break easily. They're not quite as flexible as the um, soft and flexible plastic, but that's kind of obvious. So it'll be um, it'll be fun to paint these up. Now, I don't know if you guys are new to the channel, checking this out, but I normally don't collect Soviets. So in preparation for Bagration, I uh, purchased some stuff that I could find on eBay, mid-war stuff that was applicable um, to get my hands on stuff, and started painting. Um, in anticipation for this release. One of the things I wanted to find, but never could, they were either sold out or, or whatever, are these um, BA-64 Scout cars. Now, I believe this is a new kit. And we can see there, it's got BMM 2020. So this is a new kit. I think before they were resin and um, metal. But not a lot of parts to it. The body of the scout car itself is three points. Then you've got a little machine gun turret. That looks like it does rotate. That's cool. So these guys are helpful in a Soviet army because they are one of the units that can give you spearhead. Um, I think there's a version of this that acts as um, an observer for your artillery as well. So we can see some of that detail. And these are going to paint up pretty nice and also pretty quick. You got a spare tire. Very cool. So, like I said, you get three of those, so you get a small unit of recon, which is very always very helpful. All right, next up in size, oh, I guess they're they're both equally big. Oh no, we've got the SU-76s. So you get four of those. Uh, these have these can be used a couple of different ways. They can be um, um, basically direct fire or artillery. This is also a brand new kit, 2020. So for a brand new kit you wouldn't expect any flashing and I don't see any flashing at all. So that nice detail. The gun. Very cool. Alright, then um, you get the heavy hitters. Like I said, um, for both the IS-2s and the ISU platforms, you get um, the same base, the same base chassis. So I love these tracks, the way that they're molded in one piece and um, the way that they sag on the top just looks so cool a realistic look to it I like it a lot this frame has the hull and the two track pieces so they go together then it's got um, it's always nice when they include extra machine guns because you invariably break a barrel when you're snipping stowage the ever-present uh, fuel tanks on Soviet vehicles and some extra tracks as armor or spare uh, that go on the front of the hull typically. 
So again, you got eight of those very nice models. I think these are older models. Um, let's see. Yeah, 2015. But they still hold up. They're, you know, the latest plastics that Battlefront makes. All right, so this is the IS-2. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can make the IS-85. Basically, the difference is the gun mantlet and the barrel. The, whoops, sorry about nudging the camera there, guys. The IS-2 um, has a 122 millimeter gun, something like that, this big gun here. And then the uh, S, uh, the IS-85 has an 85 millimeter gun. That was easy to remember. But you get two tops. I think this is the earlier 1943 type version. And then this with the kind of more sloped front, if you see that there, is the 44 version. I only managed to find two of these kits in plastic, so I have had experience in building it. Um, and it builds pretty straightforward. I mean, there's not, as you can see, there's not a lot of pieces to it. The hull top, the turret's really just three pieces, a top, a bottom, and then the gun mantlet kind of sticks it all together and then you've got the various um, hatches you go on top and machine guns and whatnot. But I like it. I like the look of the IS-2. I think it's a cool looking tank. Um, you get four of those. Next up, let's look at the ISUs. So you just get one hull top. It's interchangeable between the two. Um, but you can see the gun, the short stubby a thick barrel is for the ISU-152 and the longer barrel is for the um, ISU-122 and those are the caliber of the guns. It's a 152 millimeter, 122 millimeter. And you can see the detail on there is really nice. And again, it's a 2015 kit. Ah, this piece, be careful clipping out that piece. You only get one of those. And it's obviously like a vision slit for a driver or a commander on the front of the tank. Um, but it's got this spotlight or something sticking out of it that is uh, pretty fragile, you can see. So just be careful clipping that one out if I can give you any advice. Very cool tank though. Then you've got uh, four of these any tank guns. Um, they are, I want to say, 57 millimeter and 76 millimeter. The 57 millimeter actually is the bigger of the two uh, because it's like a high velocity anti tank gun. Um, this one's an older kit, I think. No, it's 2015 as well. What's funny is it comes with the uh, table so you can make like a cool diorama. There's a table with paper on the table. Some crates. Open crates with ammunition. Very cool looking uh, guns. I like them. Looking forward to building them. Now I just have to decide which, which way I want to build them. Um, I'm thinking I'm going with the 57 millimeter, although I already have one unit of those painted up that I painted up last week. So maybe I'll do 76 so I have one of each type. Um, so there you go. All right, that's a look at the plastic in the kit. Uh, now let's go ahead and look at uh, the other stuff that comes in, namely the unit cards and decals. We also, of course, get the um, copy of the rule book is very cool. Alright, so we've got the decals. This one is all white. Hull numbers. Tank names or slogans to write on the sides of the tanks. This one has your collection of red stars. Guards. So you get a lot of those. 
Now what's interesting, I wonder if it shows it on the back. I noticed this with another box set, I'm going to point it out, just because it's these kind of things that bug me sometimes. And see the box art for the ISU-122 has these big giant numbers in white with a red outline. And that T, that, I don't know if it's really a T, but it looks like a T. And you see it over here on this one too. Those decals are not in the box. So I'm not sure where, where those decals are from, but if you wanted to paint it like the box, or you, you can't. Um, those decals are there. And you could just put red stars on these guys and call it a day. But if you wanted these big cool numbers, you're going to find them someplace else. So just throw that out there as a, a side. That's just kind of a pet peeve of mine. Because I am one of those guys that I kind of like building it like it shows up on the box. Like those IS-2s um, with, the, with the kind of white stripes on the turret. I think that's really cool looking. So I'm probably going to do that. I'm probably going to paint mine to look like that, as close as I can get it. Um, but, that's again, that's just a pet peeve. Alright, uh, so those are the decals. Cool stuff. Then we have the cards. Alright. Now, I imagine we're going to do unit overviews for um, most, if not all, of these units that are in here at some point. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but... Um, I like this. This is kind of a, a cheat sheet. These are all of your formations you can take. And if you haven't checked out my uh, Bagration um, overview, where I look at the book itself, uh, we talk about these in a little bit more detail. I think the one formation that you build from this box is the heavy self-propelled artillery regiment. And then on the back you've got uh, support units you can take and uh, movement orders kind of cheat sheet. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice touch to add it, add in the thing. You really don't use it very much during the game because by the time you're playing the game, you, you know what your formation is, right? <laughs> you know which formation you're taking. But uh, building your formation, this is pretty handy. All right, so let's look at the cards. Um, I forget, we have 12 unit cards in here. Um, I don't know if that first one counts as a unit card or not, but okay. So you've got the SU-76. This is light uh, self-propelled artillery battery. Um, you know, cool tank. This is um, has some decent artillery, 72-inch range artillery. Um, only any tank too, so you're gonna be you're not gonna be bombarding tanks with this, but uh, against infantry, it's always good. Four of them, which comes in the box, cost uh, 10 points. That's not bad at all. So that's that's pretty cool. I know you can build an actual company of these guys as well. Then you've got the Heavy Tank Killer Company. This is the... Um, oh yeah, these are the either 57 or 76 millimeter. I hope I said that right before. So 57 is the high velocity anti-tank 11 and then the 76 millimeter, the bigger one, has the worst anti-tank rating. But the, uh, <coughs> the 57 millimeter has no HE. All right, then you've got, uh, oh, okay, that is the uh, Heavy Tank Killer Company. And then you've got the 76 millimeter artillery battery. That's interesting. Then you've got the IS-2 card. You've got the IS-85 card. Again, um, this is one of those uh, tanks that there's two versions of it. One is a single shot with a much higher anti-tank rating. And then you've got the IS-85, which is more shots, two shots if you don't move, at anti-tank 12. Still respectable, but struggle against Tigers and Panthers. Then you have the IS-2 HQ. This is the HQ unit. The ISU-122. Which is cool. So this guy is direct fire 14. You've got... Oh, kind of sticking together. The ISU-152. Your Hero Shock Rifle Company. I wonder how much that is, I'm kind of curious. 
So there's two versions of it. There's 13 stands and nine stands. In the box, you're only getting the nine stand version. So that's eight points for your infantry. It would have been nice if we would have got the full size shock rifle company, but already this box is a really good saving. So that's just kind of wish listing. And then you've got the BA-64 Armored Car Platoon, which has that tasty spearhead rule. I do like that. Nothing else special, it's an armored car. Oh, yeah, it comes with a card for the um, Observer. So that's pretty cool. So let's see, normally you have to field something with these guys. Oh yeah, so you've got to field either, either 76 millimeter artillery battery, 122, 152 artillery battery, or Katyushas, yay. Okay, well it's good, because I got like, I think all of those, so we could use an observer. Of course, you probably want to run these guys in units of three. Now you can't even buy a unit of two. So if you're building one as an observer, you can't field this, this unit. But, you know, it is what it is. Very cool, all right, so, that is the unit cards, and that's really the contents of the box. Um, what I can do is show you some of the models that I'm currently working on that are... Okay, we're back. So these are um, the some of the kits that come in the box set that I'm in the process of painting. So they're not completed, but I wanted to show you uh, some completed models out of the kit, and it's just not a, a vanilla unboxing. So these are, so this is like an IS-2 done with the, the big barrel. Um, I hand painted those stripes on and they're, they're still a work in progress. I wanted to do the um, decals before um, weathering. So you can see why that, you know, it's shiny there because that's where I was doing the decals. Um, and then I got to touch up those lines and brighten them up. but. Uh, you can see that the tank, it's a really cool looking tank. It's a big, brutal tank. Um, I guess even more brutal are these guys. These are done up as ISU 152s with the big gun. You know, in city fighting, I think these guys will do pretty good because they can do bunker buster, I think. Um, and infantry and buildings probably don't want to be shot by, by these guys. Um, so it's pretty cool. Let me show you a comparison with some common German tanks just so you can get an idea of the size. Here we have some, some Germans. These are, you know, a Tiger, a Stug. Um, and you can see the size of these Russian tanks in comparison. So the Tiger is still bigger. I mean, objectively, it's still wider. It's about the same length. Maybe the these guys are just a tad bit longer, but it might just be the fenders. Um, so it's comparable to a heavy tank. It's a big tank, and you can just see how it dwarfs a, a Stug. Uh, Panzer IV would be the same way. They'd be kind of small to these guys. So there you go. That's just an example or kind of a scale of what you're getting here. All right, final thoughts. Let's wrap this up. Um, the Soviet starter force, what do I think of it? I, I like it a lot. I am in the position um, that I think this box is designed to um, <laughs> design for. I, I'm that person right now because I'm new to the Soviets. Uh, the starter force is really good. I don't have any of these units. Well, I do have a couple of these and a couple of these, but um, in, in any you know quantity. Um, to be able to field a, a, a company or a battalion of something. So this really gives you um, a, a good mix of things. You've got heavy armor, you've got artillery, you've got recon, you've got infantry, you've got anti-tank guns. It's, you've got a little bit of, of everything to have a combined arms force, um, which is nice. I, so individually, I like all these. I want all of these units in my toolbox as I move forward in my Soviet army uh, journey to, to try out and play. I want to try a IS-2 company or battalion. I want to try a heavy assault gun company. Um, so, you know, this will be a great addition for that. It's a great starter. Now, <clears throat> that said, 
looking at the formation that you build here, um, I'm not sold on. I, I think that, again, this is some good starting points, and if you want to build this box and just play with this box, th that's going to work, but taking your, your gaming uh, one step higher as far as strategy and tactics, this formation is not the most efficient formation. One of the things I'll talk about a lot, you'll hear me talking about a lot, is um, your core formation. You know, there are are only a few ways to, to lose a Flames of War game. One is your opponent captures an objective. The other is your formation is broken. And oftentimes breaking your opponent's formation is easier than capturing uh, the objectives. And if you see that opportunity, um, you can do it. The way that they have this uh, heavy assault group set up, really in your core formation, you only have three units, a HQ IS-2, and then two ISU-122s and two ISU-152s. So your core formation is really only um, five tanks. That's, that's not a lot. So if you're facing uh, Panthers or <laughs> Tigers or something like that, and they manage to kill you know, three of those, you know, let's say they kill your HQ and one of your platoons, the whole rest of your army is gonna be running away. Um, so you want to um, you want to keep that in mind when you're, you're building this or going to play with this particular type of formation. Um, <clears throat> as a thought, I would probably up the uh, the self-propelled batteries from uh, two units to three units uh, each, because uh, if they're starting out at two units, you lose one, or even if he's just bailed out and doesn't get back in, um, that. <laughs> that unit is not in good spirits and doesn't count towards your, your formation morale. Um, giving Having three in there is just a little insurance. You could lose one, uh, you know, and still be in good spirits. So that might be a, a good way to do it. Maybe drop the um, support unit of IS-2s and uh, that should give you enough points to buy, um, you know, a, a few extra ISU-122s or 152s. Um, so that might be something to, to look at. Uh, but again, that's um, a more advanced issue <laughs> with this list, and again, it's not a big deal. Um, as I've said, I'm going to use all of this uh, stuff. I might actually end up uh, purchasing a separate box of, if I want to run an IS-2 company, I think I might need more. Uh, I have two, and I've got four here, so that's six, so I might need a, a few more. But um, that's neither here nor there for the purposes of this review. Okay. So, as a new player, I think it's great. Um, existing Soviet players, I don't think star any starter force is geared towards an existing player for that faction. Um, but it does give you a really good entry point. If you want to get into Soviets, um, $100 gets you almost a full 100 point army and it gives you the building blocks to build a couple of different formations. You know, you can build heavy assault gun uh, battalion, you can build an IS-2, or IS-85 battalion um, and use these as a starting point. These guys can be their own self-propelled artillery regiment, the light self-propelled artillery regiment. Um, and then these guys, I, th I think there's a formation for the scout cars, but I'm, I don't remember off the top of my head. And infantry, you've got a good start for infantry. So there's a lot of entryways, a lot of pathways to um, expanding your Soviet force from this heavy assault gun group. Now I do know, they didn't send me a copy sadly, that they are also releasing a box of T-34s. So if you want a T-34 battalion, it's like 21 T-34s. It's just a box full of T-34s. Um, I don't know how much that that is, if that's going to be a hundred bucks like this one, but that is another way to, to build is the massive T-34 horde. In that case, you might support them with some heavier hitters, uh, but um, that's a, that's another build. Uh, as an offshoot too, there's there's infantry builds, but those I don't think are going to be any kind of starter force. Um, I think infantry heavy uh, formations, Soviet formations, are a little bit more uh, for advanced players, uh, or at least players that appreciate a hundred potential hundred stands of infantry they get to move. It's a certain type of player that loves that, but those players, they they really love it. And uh, I've been on the receiving side. It can be pretty brutal. 
Um, but <laughs> again, I get distracted. I'm kind of excited about this box set. So I'm going to cut it short because I want to go ahead and start building these and add them to my Soviets. I need to uh, a battle Jake and I need to get you guys a battle report. So I'm going to build what I, I need to for another battle report so I can get that out to you guys. So there you go, guys. That's a look at the Soviet Starter Force Heavy Assault Group. I do want to mention that we have a Flames of War Patreon. On that Patreon, our patrons have access to a new Flames of War battle report every month um, that's exclusive to them. So that's going to include uh, battles here for Bagration. So check that out. I'll put a link in the video description below. Also, please do check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. Uh, and here on YouTube, we would always appreciate a like and subscribe. Click that bell so you can receive notification when we publish new content. As always, though, thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.